Okay, um, in this video, I am going to quickly show you how I paint up these Bretonian peasant archers um, in a Bastogne theme. Uh, when I say Bastogne, I mean the Bastogne of uh, the Beast Slayer of like 8th edition uh, Warhammer Fantasy. Um, if you're watching this after the launch of the Old World, uh, the scheme's going to be much the same, except you're probably going to have some white slashed in or to match the new heraldry, of the new lore of the region. Um, but this will go in the classic, you know, just red and yellow. Uh, the way I'm doing this fast is I'm using the slap chalk method, which means I'm going to do some Xenothal priming, which I've already done from this model. Um, start by priming him all the way black. Then at a more upward angle, I did a gray sear spray paint. And then finally from the top, I did wraith bone. So this gives me layers to the undercoating. So you could see I have dark areas, I have light areas. And then when I paint over this with the contrast paints, these are going to bleed through and a lot of the highlighting work has been done for me. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually enhance these highlights by doing a very heavy dry brush of a pure white. Um, I'm not very neat. I'm pretty sloppy and pretty heavy. I just want to get, you know, these tones just one more higher level there. And now we're gonna start adding the contrast paints. Um, so when I use contrast, I like to work from the inside out. So I'm gonna start here with the wood, look up to his handle, then do skin, undergarments, overgarments, all the details. So to do the bow, to give it kind of a reddish color, I am using Gore Grunt of Fur, uh, Games Workshop paint. Next, I'm just going to work on his handle here. I'm just going to do some apothecary white, just to keep this as like a white cloth thing. Now we're going to take some of Gilliman's flesh, another citadel paint, um, and we're going to do his flesh. Now the great thing about this paint is you can use contrast medium uh, to make the darkness lighter or darker, depending on what you're going for. I think it's really nice if you have a regiment of soldiers to have a lot of different various skin tones. Um, but for this one, I'm just using the tone straight out of the pot. Just being careful not to let it pool too much. Put his face there. And then we'll go down here and do his legs. Of this little contrast paints, I do, or for skin tones, um, I do believe this is the lightest one. Um, but I do have very good luck thinning it down with contrast medium. If this tone is a little darker than what you're going for. Um, you could also go to Okay, so now we're going to focus on his undergarments um, because they're peasants uh, to stick with floor, right? I mean, they're using arrows to kind of look down on. Um, I just don't like mine being as organized or as uniform, so I, I do a lot of different colors for these. Um, on this one, I'm using Rattling Grime, uh, which is another set of little paint, of course. It's kind of like this blackish brown. Um, it's really good over metals in a lot of cases, but I also like it as kind of like a very drab undertone here on my peasants. Um, and as a bonus, this should kind of help when we get to the fun colors, the colors that best stone to really kind of pop. All right, and next I'm gonna do the hair, and this is actually gonna be a two-step process. I'm gonna go over it with Yenden Yellow. Um, it's another GW paint, and then I'm gonna go over it again with a Skeletal Horde, which will tone it down a little bit um, and make it look a more natural blonde.
Now is that that's had a chance to dry, we're just gonna go over it with just a little bit of skeleton board. Now we're starting to have some fun. Let's break out the bright colors. Let's make it, you know, Bretonian. Um, so I'm gonna do his overcoat in Bastone's colors. I am gonna use Ball Red and Imperial Fist Yellow. These are both contrast paints. They're some of the newer contrast paints. Um, and again, I don't like doing my peasants very uniform. Sometimes I do a checkerboard. Uh, sometimes, you know, I do one side yellow, one side red. You could also do a horizontal, we'll just mix it up some. Uh, this one, I'm going to keep it simple. We're just going to do the front side red, back side yellow. And back, we're going to be very careful and go about halfway. And now we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side using Imperial Fist Yellow um, Contrast Paint. Uh, this paint is actually quite amazing. Um, if you've been hobbying for long, you know how hard yellows can be. Um, but this contrast paint, I mean, it covers, it's bright, it goes on so smooth. Um, this is probably the best paint in their range uh, just because of, of, of what I can do with a color that traditionally, you know, everyone struggles with. Um, this yellow is a great thing to have in your arsenal, even if you're mostly painting other colors or other other companies where your colors, which I totally understand, GW is hell expensive. Uh, these contrast yellows are just phenomenal. For the patches on the surcoat, I mean, I, I'm just going to have some fun with it. As a peasant, in my head, he's just picking up cloth where he can find it. He can't necessarily get a match. He's not being equipped the best by his lord. Um, so I'm just going to use a dark blue for this patch here, uh, which doesn't fit anywhere else. It's going to stand out. And that is 100% the point. And here for the front patch, I'm going to use an orange. It's called Magma Draw Flame. Another Citadel paint. And towards the end, we will dirty these up, of course. Okay, and now we're just going to paint his leather jerkin. Um, I'm going to use a variety of different of uh, GW's contrast paints for the browns. This is snake bite leather. Careful not to get it on his belt because I will be using a different color for that. Um, and like I said, I, I mix these up with my peasants. I don't want them to look like the uniform. So I use a lot of different colors. You know, this guy is in snake bite. Another guy might be in acro's dune shade, which is another brown. Um, just, just mix it up. Um, I think that's how peasants look best. I don't want them to look like a very professional fighting force.
And now I am going to paint his belts across his chest. Now I am using Saigor Brown here, which is actually a very dark contrast brown. Um, most of the times when I use this, I actually mix this up either with another brown or with a contrast or technical con medium, excuse me, uh, or mix it with a technical medium uh, to get a lighter color. Um, but I think, you know, this dark brown works for belts and straps, and so I'm just going to leave it. Now I'm going to take a different Citadel uh, brown and do the rest of his armor. This is Agro's Doom Shape. This is a lighter brown. It's got like a little bit of yellow to it. Um, I like this color a, a lot. Um, and I just think it adds more interest to the figure to do a lot of different tones of leather. Um, especially as you do it throughout the regiment. And so when you put them all together, um, it's going to look really, really good. Now for his hat, we are going back to snake bite leather. Now I'm just going to very quickly do his shoes and Black Templar, another contrast paint. Steal from Citadel. Apparently I have too much money and so I have to buy the most expensive hobby paints. Okay, now we are moving away from the contrast and we're going to do the metal parts of the model. Um, for this first coat, I am actually using Duncan Rhodes' new product line. Um, they're called Two Thin Coats. I'm um, using plate armor. Um, if you haven't seen these yet, uh, the paints are solid. I'm a big fan. Um, and I think the metallics are especially solid. Um, but if you're using Games Workshop, the equivalent of this would probably be Lead Belcher. Okay, we're getting near the end. Now I'm just gonna use some washes for some liquid talent. I'm gonna take some Agrax Earth Shade, which is a brown wash. I'm gonna dirty up his handle here. Now we're gonna take some Seraphim Sepia um, and we're just gonna paint up right around these patches. And finally, we're going to take some Nuln Oil and hit our metallics. You know, hit some of our, our lines in the model. I don't know, maybe right here. So the transition from the leather to his jacket makes a little bit more sense. Neckline's not a bad idea. Just gonna help to add a little bit of additional depth to the model. Maybe right here, all of our leathers come together. Anywhere else she feels appropriate.
okay? Well, what's basically left to do with the model is we're going to just enhance some of the highlights we have, create some more highlights. The first thing I'm going to touch is the flesh. I'm just going to take some Acadian flesh tone and I'm just going to touch the raised areas of his bare skin just very lightly. The slap chop method has taken up care of a lot of our highlights. Um, like I said, we're just gonna, just gonna bump it up just a little bit more, very lightly. Especially over here on the darker side of his face. Should we get his lines there? Very angry brow. And we're going to get his fingers as well. Just to enhance them just a little bit. Now I'm going to go a shade higher with my metallics. In my case, this is a paint called Sir Coates Silver. Um, and just going to highlight very lightly some of the metallics in the model. Just like that. And finally, I'm taking some Ultuan Gray, another GW paint. It's an off white, and I am going to touch up all of these little cloth threads that he has. Let's try that again. And I'm going very light here. And that is actually where I'm going to leave the model. But if you leave it here, you're going to get quite a bit of compliments on your regiment of peasant archers. Um, the slap chop method gets 90% of the results for about you know 25% of the effort. Um, it is a great thing to pick up and learn um, if you want to paint an army very quickly. Uh, thanks for watching.